In a web application, it's likely there's going to be parts of your app that you don't want just anyone off the internet to be able to access, like a dashboard for example. They'll need to log in and be authorized before they gain access to these pages. In View Mastery's token-based authentication course, we'll be using JSON web tokens to create a front-end authentication solution using View Router, Vuex, and Axios. So how does token-based authentication work? Well, on the client side, we want the user to log in, and we'll take that information and send it to the server. The server then authenticates that user, and if everything is good to go, our user will be logged in, and our server will return a token. You can think of this token much like a key because it unlocks parts of our application. Our front-end application will want to store that token somewhere, such as in our browser's local storage. We'll then use that token when we need to, such as when we need to make an API call for some private data. In this case, we'll make a copy of the token and send it along with that API request. The server then decrypts that token, ensuring that the user has the proper credentials to be accessing that data, and if everything is good to go, it'll send back that private data. In token-based authentication, the token will be cleared when the user logs out. We can also set an expiration for when that token should be cleared, in which case the user would have to log in again and receive a new token. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be using JSON web tokens throughout this course. This kind of token consists of three parts. The first is the header which contains the type, in this case JWT, and the hashing algorithm being used. The second part is the payload, which contains the information that we're transmitting, usually about the user, and it might have options such as the issuer of the token, the expiration date, whether the user has admin privileges, and so on. And the third part is the signature. This is a hash of the header, plus the payload, plus the secret. The secret lives on the server, and it helps us decrypt the token, and is also used to sign new tokens. So let's look at how we'll be using JWT throughout this course. In the app we'll be building, our user will be able to log in, but first they have to register and create an account with a name, email, and password. When they hit register, they'll be given a JWT token, which we'll put in local storage. We'll use this token to access a protected route, in this case our dashboard, and when the dashboard component loads, it makes an API call for private resources, these events. And as soon as our user logs out, we'll clear the token from local storage. If our user has created an account, they can log back into it, and upon logging in, they'll receive a new token, which we'll put in local storage, and again, when the user logs out, we'll clear that from local storage. In the course, we'll also look at handling authentication errors. We'll be covering a lot in this course, but what we won't be touching on is the back-end side. There are a lot of different ways to approach this, whether you're using Node.js, Rails, PHP, or another back-end solution, but we'll be focusing on creating a front-end authentication system, which can be used with your back-end of choice. I'll see you inside the next lesson.